Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and in today's video we are going to be recreating every single spacecraft that has visited the International Space Station and, you know, sending them there, and it's going to dock up, and we're going to have all of them dock together, it's going to be really cool. Very unrealistic, obviously, because a lot of these craft are retired and stuff, but I thought it would be pretty cool we just fill up the, all the docking ports with all the different stuff that, that's going to be epic, and we're starting off with the most cost-effective vehicle ever developed, the Space Shuttle, obviously. Very, very, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool rocket. Space Shuttle is pretty synonymous, synonymous, that's a hard word, with the ISS, as it is uh, largely responsible for uh, for building the thing. It's basically the Space Shuttle's big achievement um, was, was building the ISS, and they actually had to delay its retirement a little bit because they needed it for ISS stuff. So, yeah, this was, uh, this was America's big old, big old thing, and it visited the ISS a lot of times, and it is actually the biggest vehicle to ever uh, visit the ISS in terms of size and weight. As you can, you know, it's, it's like a big giant plane thing. Um, so we're going to be doing our little bit of a rendezvous after we're going to be jettisoning the orange tank just as we are just about in orbit. And then we're going to fire up the OMS thrusters, which you do not know. The OMS thrusters are actually AJ-10 engines, which are the same engine used on the Apollo service module and a few other upper stages and stuff. But a the Apollo service module is mainly what it's known for. And it's uh, OMS thrusters as well. So fun fact if you didn't know. Nope. So now we're going to go ahead and do some maneuver node twiddling, 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 is that the word? Um, and then we're trying to go ahead and get to our ISS. I originally really wanted to do a modded ISS, but oh my, those do not work. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I figured I'd just use my stock ISS. I think I have an accurate ISS. It changes so often, like the, the, the configuration and modules are added, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I think this is accurate. I don't know. There's some people who probably know a lot about the ISS. They're probably going to look flamey in the comments, but uh, I think I got it right. Um, and this thing ooh, barely has enough docking ports. We actually have to get kind of creative to find places for all these things because there are, there's a lot of these, a lot of these guys, a lot of craft have visited the ISS before. Um, so starting off with the space shuttle, which is going to take the frontmost docking port because that's where it usually docked. It's very cool. It pop in right there, and there is the space shuttle. So without further ado, we can head over to Falcon Nine. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a bit of a change. The Falcon 9 is the new one. The space shuttle is old. I don't know. Just this one, I guess. Very awesome. Now, we're going to be doing the Cargo Dragon. So, uh, Falcon 9 Cargo Dragon, which actually, as of recording, today was CRS-22, I believe. Um, but the Falcon 9 with the, you know, with the Crew Dragon. Very awesome. Um, very awesome. It's a cool launch. And uh, it was actually a very interesting launch because it was the first time they did a boost back burn with a drone ship landing, so that was pretty epic. And uh, speaking of boost back burns, we are going to be uh, cutting off the main engine, separating the two stages, and the bottom stage is going to be doing a boost back burn. Um, just because the way KSP works, we can we have enough delta v to do boost back burns all the way back to the uh, to the launch site uh, with with the. Um, with the, with the Falcon 9, this is the Tundra Exploration Falcon 9. Very awesome. Very awesome uh, uh, mod. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring her in for a landing back to the KSC. And I figure now would be a great time to say if you haven't, you could maybe subscribe. Oh, I'd appreciate that. We're coming, close, coming up on 12k subscribers, so that's pretty awesome. Thank you everyone who has subscribed. You guys are very awesome. And thank you to all of our Patreon members as well as our channel members as the Falcon 9 comes in for a very epic landing. There it is. So yeah, that's, that's, that's all the plugs. Also, we have a Discord if you want to do that. And we also have some merch, PilotShop.com. Thank you everyone for all the support, I guess. So um, now we're going to be rendezvousing our second craft, also known as Cargo Dragon with the International Space Station. Um, so we're going to be going to one of the underside uh, docking ports here, one of the uh, the cargo berthing ports. Um, I believe, uh, actually, I, I believe Crew Dragon, uh, or Cargo Dragon rather, can autonomous, autonomously dock now. It used to have to be a grabbed by the arm, I, the cannon arm, I believe. Don't quote me on that, though, but uh, we don't have a cannon arm because those are really cracking you. So we're going to go ahead and bring ourselves in for a little bit of a rendezvous, a little bit of a docking. And by the way, the orientation of the space station is completely inaccurate here, but if I wanted the orientation to be accurate, I would have had to continuously fix it every single time I arrived, and that was just way too much work. Um, up to the Russians, Mother Russia! Yes, we are, like, speedrunning these uh, Soyuz. Um... Soyuz is, um, obviously, it is, it's a pretty, I believe it's the most commonly visited craft of the IS, or the, is that even grammar? I don't know, grammar hard. Um, so the Soyuz, it, it, it's, it's the craft that visited the ISS the most, rather. Um, so, um, it brought crew, a lot of crew, um, especially from 2011 until 2020, 
um, when, you know, America didn't have any sort of launch abilities because space shuttles. So, um, yeah, very, very, you know, it's a reliable rocket. Um, it, with the bottom stage is the R-7, or the, the, the original Soviet ICBM, actually, which is kind of ironic that um, America is funding um, because they're, they're paying for astronauts to get on top of Soviet ICBMs. But whatever. Irony. Fate loves irony, right? I bet that's not what they thought would happen in the 50s. Um, so, we're gonna go ahead and jettison the bottom stage, and now it is the upper stage, uh, which is going to be uh, bringing ourselves into orbit, and then we will be doing our rendezvous with the ISS. Lots of rendezvousing today. I hope you like rendezvous. Um, I, well, that's a lot of cool craft. Um, unfortunately, I didn't, wasn't able to find mods for all the craft. Um, so, unfortunately, unfortunately, we'll have to do a few stock craft. I know, what a shame. Stock evil. Evil Knievel, but I did get Waterfall finally. I know a lot of people have asked me to do that, so I guess I'll maybe make the Stockcraft a little more bearable. We have we have three Stockcraft. I know, crazy. What a sin! I know, I used to be all about Stock, but I'm like 50-50 now. Mod's cool, but Stock also cool. But uh, also Docking cool, as we kind of come in around with a little bit of a little bit of an epic turn here, and then we can line up with the uh, with the aft section of the space station. This is the aftmost section. Um, and this is the Russian section, obviously. Um, and we're going to be bringing her in for a landing. And I had to line up the solar panels because that would have been a sin. A lot of sins. So much sinning going on here. But now we can move on to the first Starcraft, which is the Ariane 5. And I know I said I have Waterfall, but this is the old texture for the mainsail engine. And Waterfall is not set up for that. So you guys have to bear a stock plume for just one more launch. Um, Ariane 5. Which actually uh, has the distinct honor of launching the, in quotes, heaviest... Uh, heaviest craft to visit the ISS. The space shuttle is really the heaviest, but I, this thing has the most payload. Actually, no, I don't think it does. Um, but it is the heaviest resupply vehicle post space shuttle, I believe. Um, it, it's close to the space shuttle's cargo capacity. This thing weighs just over 20 tons. Um, uh, someone, maybe someone in the comments can tell me. There's a few people who are like like geniuses who seem to always know everything about everything in my comments. So I don't know. Could this thing develop uh, or uh, send more payload to the ISS than the shuttle? I do not know. It's kind of a meme if it could because this thing is puny. Um, but this is the ATV, the autonomous transport vehicle. Uh, I think. If I could get my acronyms right, which is I really should, because this is this thing was just in a video a few days ago, or maybe a week ago. Um, I also have um, the uh, what it's like the weird ignition mod where it like actually models engine ignitions, um, and I don't know how to use it. I don't even know why I have it, and I was too lazy to go uninstall it. So you'll see me like spamming the activate button because my engines don't like because I don't know how the stupid mod works. Um, and now you can see some of the um, the uh, the waterfalls stuff which is a sick mod and here is here's where we have to start getting creative because there's not enough docking ports in the american side or the international side so we're docking the esa payload onto the uh onto the russian segment uh moving on is can you guess what this is do you can know what this is is my stock this thing was hard to do with stock because it's a really basic rocket but it's hard to it's the antares um it's the antares so then normally the fairing doesn't widen like that but because my payload is two and a half meters the fairing and the rocket is two and a half meters. It had to widen it a little bit, or else the fairing would have like clipped into the into the payload. So, um, and what payload? What payload be this? It'd be Cygnus. The actually the only payload that Antares launches right now, um, and a very low powered upper stage by the way. This thing takes an eternity to get into orbit. So, yeah, basically all Antares does now is launch the Cygnus once a few times a year. So two three times a year, I think. Um, so yeah, Cygnus is a cool rocket. It has the very epic Soviet engine as its bottom stage. Um, some actually have been theorizing that the, um, the Neutron, if you don't know what that is, that is Rocket Lab's new, uh, new rocket coming out in 2024, I believe the earliest is, um, uh, and that some people, uh, are theorizing that it will actually replace Antares to develop the, to, uh, send Cygnus to the ISS, which is, would be pretty cool. Yeah, Rocket, Rocket Lab cool. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for our rendezvous with Cygnus. Cygnus is, uh, it's been supplying the ISS for a long time, um, yeah, it's part of, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, the, the, uh, solar panels are circular, so I just use probe cores. I don't really, there weren't, there aren't any circular solar panels in stock KSB. Although I believe there are soon with 1.12. I quote me, maybe, I should know that. Um, there are new solar panels, I do know that. I don't remember how big they are circular, but it'll be cool. Um, so, uh, we are now, oh, look at that. That looks so cool. I really like the waterfall, especially on the spark engine. Um, because that thing has a super super annoying like monoprop sound in, in the stock game. You know what it is? It's like that. It's a really annoying sound. 
Um, it's I don't know why Squad thought that would be a good good engine sound. It's not. Um, so I, I'm just so happy that it has that has a new sound. Oh boy, an arrow spamming the the like button as we come in to the ISS for the next bit of docking, which is very very epic. So. Um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead to the, uh, another Russian side, because, yeah, um, Russia has a lot of docking ports, and they don't have a lot of spacecraft, so I figured, hey, we could send some of the, uh, the, some of the imperialist, western, inferior capitalist craft over to the, uh, over to the Russian segment, and it was such a, such a stain on a glorious part of the space station. Um, next up is progress! So, progress, very similar to Soyuz, but with a few differences. Um... So if you don't know what Progress is, it is the uh, the Russian resupply vehicle. Uh, it is basically a Soyuz, but it is like a Soyuz, but they don't have um, any like uh, separation thingies. So the, the orbit module and the descent module and the service module all stay attached. Um, and there is obviously no heat shield or entry thing. So it's basically like a, like a Soyuz, but they took out all the human stuff and just put in cargo. Um, so very cool. The fairing is also slightly different on this thing, and obviously doesn't have a launch escape system. The Soyuz rocket type thing is really the is one of the actually two rockets that will be featured multiple times in this video. I'm sure you can figure out uh, what the other one is, but there is our Progress spacecraft, um, which is uh, on its way up to uh, up to orbit. And I believe Progress was the most docked resupply vehicle. I believe. Again, don't quote me. See, I don't know my ISS facts. There's just some, Space Station's really complicated. Like, it's way more complicated than I first thought it was. There's so many different spacecraft and modules and blah, 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 blah. Complicated thing. And here I am trying to make everyone I think. I'd be a massive meme if I forgot a spacecraft or something. I'm sorry if I did. I, I really don't think I did. I'm like 90% sure. Um, I'm 90% sure I'm good here, and here we go, bring it on progress. There it is, time for Japan. Japan, Japan. Uh, it was the H-2B, H-2 rocket, something or the other. H-3, oh my gosh, my, I, my mind is not working today. Um, but this is Japan's uh, resupply vehicle, the HTV, uh, is what it is called. It uh, is not launched very often, but it is... Uh, the biggest payload that Japan launches used their big boy rocket here, as you can see. Actually, one of the bigger rockets just ever. It's pretty cool. Um, there it goes, and we have some squad-branded interstages. Um, I don't know. Well, actually, the reason that is because I forgot to install a black flag, so I figured, ah, that's will work. Um, as we now have another fairly low-powered upper stage, as we can reveal our very epic payload. This thing is also quite heavy. So yeah, very cool vehicle right here. Very orange. A lot of orange stuff in Japan, apparently. I guess orange is cool. I mean, shuttle orange. Orange rocket, cool. I mean, Esla, yeah, maybe. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Um, so yeah, here we are just chugging our way in to orbit with our skiff engine. This is our final stock craft, I believe, of the video. So we can get rid of that disgusting stock stuff. Uh, some of the mods are really cool, especially Tundra. Tundra and Blue Dog Design Bureau. Those are... Those are those are pretty nifty, very good. I don't know what with the I don't know Italian accents are fun. <laughs> so uh, time for another rendezvous. It's funny how those seem to always happen in this video because hey, by us us. Um, so there are a total of, I believe, eight spacecraft who have visited the ISS. So obviously we'll be doing eight, eight launches in the video. Actually, no, I lie. There's nine. So I guess you'll have to you'll have to stay tuned um, to see what see what the see what the last launch is. Um, I, I bet some of you figured out what it is, but but uh, I, I no way I wouldn't include this last last little awesome spacecraft that I totally deserved a spot. You'll see. I bet, I bet some of you already know what it is, um, if not most. So um, here's what I realized. I ran out of docking ports. Um, there's one left, but I already know what I want to put to that one other. So I figured, hey, I am going to go to the Bishop Airlock because I have an advanced grabbing unit on there. And this is realism. This is I me mean, by getting creative. Um, <laughs> I believe there's actually another birthing port somewhere around the station in real life. But this is what I mean about the ISS being complicated. Um, but here this thing comes in. Very kind of janky docking because the solar panel is right there. So I'm trying to not, you know, hit the solar panel. Boop, 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 and... Docking. 
And Falcon 9! Welcome back to another Falcon 9! This is Crew Dragon. So we did Cargo Dragon at the beginning of the video, and now we are doing Crew Dragon as our final crap. This is the eighth launch, but obviously there's gonna be that ninth one coming up, so oh, stay tuned. Um, so, Crew Dragon. So what's the difference between Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon? There are actually a few differences that we can talk about, I guess. Um, so, if you look at the trunk, Crew Dragon actually has four fins, while Cargo Dragon only has two fins. And, uh, Karu Dragon also has Super Dracos. So, yeah, that's pretty dope. Um, but there we go, separate the bottom stage, and I'm gonna do our boost back burn. Obviously, you know, uh, Cargo Dragon doesn't need to do, doesn't need Dracos because, you know, it doesn't have crew, so the Dra Super Dracos have the launch support system. Um, so obviously doesn't, doesn't need those. So, uh, first stage coming in for a landing right now. It's actually quite incredible how much speed you can scrub off just, like, by making making the thing, like, a big air brake. It's pretty, pretty epic. And uh, here we are coming in for a landing with the bottom stage right on the runway like so. And touchdown. Very awesome. And now we are going to do our final rendezvous with the ISS. And there it is coming into view. This thing is, la I'll show you guys, I'm going to show this final docking in one time speed. It is, it is painful. Um, yeah, it is, it is painful. This thing is, oh boy, it's a high part count. Like the, the ISS itself is 460 parts and all the other craft and stuff are happening on here. Blah, 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 blah. And obviously, we, obviously in real life, they just leave the second stage right next to the station. That's totally realistic, wee whip -ic, very wee whip -ic, um, as we come in for our final docking going on to that, that top node, which is, um, one of the pressurized mating adapters. I'm not even gonna try and guess which one it was. PMA-3. I think that's PMA-3. I think PMA-1 is the one that connects the uh, American and Russian segments. PMA-2 is where the shuttle is, and I think that's PMA-3. I think I maybe got one fact right in this video. Um, here it comes, and here's one time speed. Yeah, this is yeah, what I had to deal with the whole video. It was not fun. Um, but hey, um, got her done. It, it wasn't actually that bad. I mean, we were getting a solid Four FPS, maybe, <laughs> but here it is coming in for our final docking. And then once that is docked, that will be every spacecraft to ever visit the ISS will be attached to it at once. Which obviously never happened in real life, but hey, I think it is cool to look at. And now for our final launch, we can say hi to everyone's favorite meme, Starliner. Yay, it's meme Starliner. I, I, I had to do this. Get ready for the Starliner memes. I don't know what's better, Blue Origin memes or Starliner memes. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Starliner. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this is Boeing's capsule, which has been a colossal failure. Um, it's actually quite infamous for its test launch, in which it was supposed to go dock to the ISS, obviously uncrewed. Um, after if that test was successful, then we were going to do crew. And that uh, launch was over a year ago, and the thing, um, the Atlas V, which is what it's launched on, performed epically, um, but the, the spacecraft got lost. It could not figure out where to, how to get to the ISS. It had some clock issues. Absolutely, the thing went completely in the wrong direction, completely screwed up, and it missed the ISS by just an eternity. So, <laughs> I figured, hey, I bet you can't figure, but you can't guess what's gonna happen later in this launch. Yeah, um, yeah, this thing is an absolute meme. Boeing, you know, and it's over a year ago, and, and since then, SpaceX has launched three crews up there, brought two back. Um, and a bunch of resupply missions. Like, come on, Boeing. Um, there's actually not a stop. There's not. A, this I'm using Blue Dog Design Bureau, and unfortunately, there's no Blue Dog um, Starliner. Um, so I've had to like kind of like kind of make one out of Apollo and some other parts. So I don't know, is that a good Starliner? Maybe. Um, so we are obviously in the Dual Engine Centaur, which is a cool thing about the Starliner and a, a cool thing, right? Um, the Atlas V normally has only one RL-10 engine a on the uh, Centaur, but they needed enough thrust for abort reasons. Um, so, the, yeah, Scott Manley has a good video on it. Um, so they have they have two uh, dual engine Centaur, which is actually quite rare, which is pretty epic, but this thing is very, very slow. Um, but now we're going ahead and get ourselves into orbit. It looks pretty cool, though. Um, get ourselves into an orbit, and we're going to be totally rendezvousing with the ISS, because that's what Starliner is very good at. Oh boy, so many memes. So many memes! Uh, team space, I know. Team, team space, right? You know. Uh, come on. It's a meme! Memes are funny! Funny, funny memes. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get our orbit, and now we're gonna- Oh, let's run if you guys said, Oh no, we've gotten lost! Yay! <laughs> yeah, Starliner is such a meme. 
Alright, um, so on screen now is all of our channel members. If you want to become a channel member, you can go ahead and hit the join button below. Also on screen is all of our patrons. If you want to become a patron, you can go to the link in the description. But that is going to be it for the end of today's video. So I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please don't forget to comment to the video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.